has this already in his bed? What ancient craft is giving buildings a fresh look? Who's putting aluminum into the softest of fabrics? How did a nailing town restore its own vitality? Industry on Parade. A brand new look at our America. Produced on film each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. Disastrous fire kills scores, injures hundreds. Explosion jams hospitals. Schools and churches thrown open as emergency first aid centers. Headlines like those are mercifully few, but they still do crop up periodically. Here's a company in Albany, New York, that may have at least a partial answer to the inadequacy of our preparations for catastrophes. It's the Simmons Machine Tool Corporation, big rebuilder of heavy machinery. In addition to its other lines, now it's also turning out for civil defense agencies something called the litter cot, a combination of cot and stretcher. The light metal frame makes it easily portable for use as a stretcher, and the fold-down legs also permit its use as a cot. But the special advantage is that the legs are so constructed that the cots can be stacked one on top of another to form tiers of bunks. Folded and boxed, they're stored away in a minimum of space. We hope never to be used. But if the litter cot is needed, it's usually needed in great numbers. Civil defense workers show us how it would be utilized in event of atomic devastation. A truck which under ordinary circumstances could carry only a few victims, and not even that many without aggravating their injuries, can serve as a passable ambulance with a greatly increased capacity. Each cot interlocks firmly with the one below. From a medical standpoint, the beauty of the handy collapsible cot is that it will carry the patient from the time he's picked up off the ground until he reaches the operating table without the manhandling that often does more harm than the original injuries. In vehicles like railroad cars, special supports can be used to keep the tier of cots from toppling over. When the patients arrive at the other end, the cots will be disconnected to become stretches once more for the rest of the trip to the hospital. The hospital can quickly quadruple its capacity by replacing beds with stacks of the cots. No complete answer to our civil defense requirements, but a step in the right direction. In today's troubled world, American freedom stands as a beacon of faith, hope, and courage to the millions of people on this earth who have been forced to forfeit their individual rights for a life of human slavery. No American in his right mind would trade our way of life for one endured in Russia or any other country behind the Iron Curtain. Since our inception as a free nation, millions of citizens have laid down their lives in order that America could remain free. 160 million Americans have learned that the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. Industry on Parade visits Paramount, California and the Pacific Tile and Porcelain Company to learn what's new in ceramic tile, that is, the colorful decorative tile as distinguished from the solid color variety. What's new is a method of mass producing the tile, formerly made only by hand, a method that, like others developed in the building industries, is helping to push quality steadily upward and costs steadily down. To begin with, the mixture of clay, talc, water, and other ingredients is pressed into tile shape by machine, but a machine that still requires the attention of highly skilled attendants.
At this stage, the tiles must be handled carefully as they are stacked for their trip to the dryer. They have about the firmness of a good baker's pie crust. When they come out, they'll be much harder, but still not ready to put on a wall. For one thing, they must be glazed, then sent to the kill for their first real baking at temperatures up to 2100 degrees. But now, they will become decorative tile. A design is transferred to a stencil from which, in turn, it is transferred to a silk screen, blocking certain holes in the screen so pigments can be forced through the other holes to lay the pattern onto the tile. It's a variation of the process used for centuries in printing on cloth, adapted to the making of ceramic tile only after long and costly experimentation. In addition to colorful design, ceramic tile now also boasts interesting, varied surface textures, all equally durable and just as sanitary as the universally familiar white tiles. All finished? Not quite. There still remains one more trip through the kill to cause the chemically controlled colors to bake through to the surface and create exactly the effect intended by the designer. After it's been inspected and the various parts of the pattern have been packed for easy assembly, the job is done. Done by methods that now make it possible for decorative tile to lend its beauty and durability to wide new architectural uses. A new application of aluminum. These rolls of metal foil will actually be transformed into yarn for use in fabrics, as we're about to see here at the Stamford, Connecticut plant of one of the companies producing such yarn, the Metlon Corporation. First step is to laminate aluminum foil between two layers of the transparent plastic acetate. The colorless acetate is tinted to let the metallic sheen of the aluminum come through in any of a number of hues. Nothing new about metallic yarns, the ancients wove cloth out of gold and silver. But those old fabrics were expensive and stiff, and they tarnished quickly. Now aluminum has eliminated the stiffness and expensiveness, while the acetate surface has put an end to tarnishing. But how is the foil converted into yarn? Well, unlike conventional yarns, it isn't twisted into a slender cylinder. Rather, it's slit into flat, narrow ribbons. This is done in stages, the first being the cutting of the two-foot widths into webs about two inches wide. But before they start that process, they inspect the plasticized aluminum for possible flaws. With the stamp of approval, it's ready to be sliced. The web is sent to Metlon's Providence, Rhode Island plant to be further slit into the final yarn, which can range in width down to a hundred twentieth of an inch. The most generally used width is a sixty-fourth of an inch, one pound of which will stretch five miles. Quite a contrast to the very heavy metallic cloth of olden days. Here the yarn is wound on spools to go onto the looms of textile mills all over the land. Some wonderful things happening in America's textile industry these days. Special treatments for traditional fibers to give them properties they never had before. Amazing new synthetics. Now, brilliant, color-fast yarns of metal. One more result of never-ending industrial research. Metallic yarn is not intended to be used all by itself, but in combination with other yarns, rayon, cotton, any man-made or natural fiber. Because it is not affected by most dyes, you can dye fabric into which it has been woven, and still the metallic glint will continue to come through. What are metallic fabrics used for? Well, it's a long list and growing longer every day. Napkins, placemats, tablecloths, dresses, handbags, shoes, upholstery fabrics, draperies. Men's suits, ties, waistcoats, socks. The fabrics woven by men's ingenuity out of the metals of the earth now have all the lightness and luxuriance demanded in this comfort conscious and style conscious 20th century.
Since Americans enjoy the highest standard of living in the world, we must make sure that any changes in our system are going to increase this standard rather than decrease it. And that whatever happens to our system will benefit us in the three roles most of us play. First, as producers. In working for a living, each of us helps to produce a product or a service. Second, as customers. We all buy products and services produced by others. And third, as savers. Most of us put something aside in bank accounts, insurance policies, stocks, or bonds. Remember, better living standards depend on all of us. In Franklin, New Hampshire, an important meeting is in progress. The matter under discussion, the very future of the city and its 6,500 inhabitants. Speakers point out that Franklin, built to accommodate paper mills, lost its original reason for being when the mills had to move away to be closer to their sources of supply. This was Daniel Webster's hometown, so oratory is highly regarded and well practiced in these parts. But the meeting produces more than just talk, it produces a plan. Since a town can't exist without humming factories, and since paper making is finished here, then it's up to Franklin to bring in other industries. A non-profit company is formed, Franklin Developments Incorporated. Public-spirited participants in the plan go out and talk to other citizens, like trucker Bob Crowley, persuading them to participate too by buying stock in the corporation or by donating land on which new factories can be constructed. Hundreds of people also offered their time and labor to help put up the factory buildings when the money was raised. And raised it was, $30,000 in just a few weeks. Yes, he'll help. His existence, too, like that of the filling station operator, depends upon a community that's economically healthy. It was everyone's problem, and just about everyone came through. And so with the money, materials, land, and labor contributed, they put up two new factories, renovated a couple of older ones, and spread the word far and wide that Franklin was looking for new industrial neighbors. It got them. For example, a shutdown hosiery mill now houses four different types of manufacturing operation, employing 50 more people than the hosiery mill did. Factories hum once more in Franklin, turning out a diversified line of products, infusing new life into a town that was virtually dead, but refused to lie down. Through their shares in the Franklin Development Company, townsfolk have acquired a pride of possession in their industrial plants. They made the renewed activity of those plants possible, and now the plants sustain them providing jobs, income, trade. Nothing uncommon for the head of a Franklin family to say, let's take a ride out and look at our factory.